This micro lecture is on fuel chemistry. Like the biomass chemistry lecture, this will be a cursory overview and not a detailed discussion. When you have a chance, please visit the shown link and read about the Capstone CMT380 hybrid supercar. This car is powered by a turbine instead of an internal combustion engine. It is a hybrid vehicle and the turbine is used to drive an electric motor. This makes it fuel flexible and gives it outstanding mileage and power. In some ways, it is one of the most compelling developments in hybrid car technology in quite some time. It is also directly related to our coming discussion on fuel chemistry. Please take a moment and review this week's learning objectives. As you learn about bioenergy, you will almost certainly find yourself confused by the various naming conventions. Like most names, they have been largely based on marketing and not on facts. For example, bio-oils generally mean pyrolysis oils, which have no chemical similarity to petroleum or vegetable oils. Biogas actually means biologically produced methane or natural gas and has nothing to do with gasoline. Biodiesel is an interesting one because it is almost exclusively composed of something called fatty acid methyl esters, which makes it a very pure fuel compared to renewable diesel, which is a mixture of hydrocarbon components more like regular diesel. Finally, the word blend stock is thrown around a lot because most biofuels are in fact blend stocks, and this means they have to be mixed with regular gasoline or regular diesel at some level to be a fuel that works well in the engines commonly available today. If there are any questions about these terms as we learn more about different conversion processes, please ask. It is much easier to understand everything when the terms are clear. Please take a moment to see the trends in this table of fuel performance values. For clarity, DME stands for dimethyl ether, and it is commonly regarded as a renewable diesel alternative. It is very important to remember that diesel and gasoline engines have been designed for different kinds of fuel. This means that each engine has a preferred type of fuel for its design, and this type of fuel has its own specific fuel performance characteristics. Octane and cetane value describe how well a fuel will perform in an engine, not the energy content of the fuel. Energy content and engine performance, as dictated by octane cetane, cannot be separated and in fact must always be considered together when considering new fuels or how an engine type will perform on a new fuel. Diesel engines require diesel fuel and diesel fuel is judged based on its cetane value. The cetane value is based on a chemical called hexadecane, or cetane. Cetane ignites very easily under compression, so it was assigned a cetane number of 100, while alpha methylnaphthalene was assigned a cetane number of 0, creating a spectrum from 100 to 0. All other hydrocarbons in diesel fuel are compared to cetane in terms of how well they ignite under compression. Therefore, the cetane number measures how quickly the fuel starts to burn under diesel engine conditions. Since there are hundreds of components in diesel fuel, and each has a different cetane number, the overall cetane number of the diesel is the average cetane value of all the components. For more information, please look up cetane number on Wikipedia. These are the decreasing cetane numbers for these fuel chemicals. Notice how the chemical structure changes as the cetane value changes. So back to the O's, circles, and straight lines. Looking at these chemical structures, you can see quite a few similarities between petroleum and biological oils. Diesel is produced almost entirely from petroleum, so the similarities between petroleum and biological oils sort of help explain why biodiesel can be made from biological oils and work as well as it does. Gasoline engines require gasoline fuels, and gasoline fuels are judged based on octane rating. Just like diesel, this rating is based on two chemicals rated at 100 and 0. For gasoline, isooctane is rated at 100, and heptane is rated at 0. 
The octane rating of gasoline measures anti-knocking capacity in a test engine and is defined by comparison to octane and heptane mixtures. Octane ratings do not mean that a fuel contains octane or heptane, just that it has the same detonation-resistant properties that a certain percent of isooctane would. Because some fuels are more knock-resistant than pure isooctane, the definition has been extended to allow for octane numbers greater than 100. Octane ratings are not indicators of the energy content of fuels. They are only a measure of the fuel's tendency to burn in a controlled manner rather than exploding in an uncontrolled manner. For example, when the octane number is raised by blending in ethanol, the energy content per volume is reduced. These are the increasing octane numbers for these fuel chemicals. Notice how the chemical structure changes with the octane value. Think about how different these changes are compared to the diesel cetane value trends in chemical structure. Where biological oils were closest to diesel, bio-oils, or pyrolysis oils, are closest to gasoline. However, they have far too much oxygen and acidity to be used without modification. Generally, we can solve this problem by exposing bio-oils to high levels of hydrogen, but it is very expensive. It wouldn't be fair not to touch on jet engines, given their increasing role in the bioenergy field. However, there's not too much to say, because jet fuel has almost nothing to do with internal combustion engine fuels. The most important thing for a jet fuel is energy content. These are the decreasing energy content values for these fuel chemicals. Notice how the chemical structure changes as the energy content decreases. Think about this trend compared to the trends you have seen for cetane and octane ratings. Without getting into too much detail, fuel is almost always a mixture and never a pure chemical. This table shows some of the chemical differences between different fuels that perform the same. This is a very important fuel characteristic because it means they are cheaper to produce than specialty and fine chemicals that must be pure. It means that as long as the cetane, octane, and energy content values are good, the fuel can be composed of a very wide variety of different things. This is another table showing different fuel compositions that perform the same. Since fuel is a mixture and it must perform well consistently, there is a large list of other characteristics necessary to make a good fuel. A good fuel is sometimes quite an exotic cocktail of organic chemistries meant to provide good overall vehicle performance and meet regulations. A good fuel serves the needs of the entire vehicle and not just the engine. When you have a moment, please visit the provided hybrid cars link. It discusses a fascinating new semi developed by Walmart to decrease their fuel consumption. It is a carbon fiber, turbine hybrid powered semi, and while no miles per gallon estimates were provided, I suspect the improvements are quite dramatic. This is worth following in the future.